Hello respected viewers, it's George from High Island and here I am outside Craven Cottage, the home of Fulham Football Club. Um, anyway, and uh, because obviously it's just um, two days since the death of his erstwhile owner, Mohammed Fayad, was announced. And you can see in what affection he was held by fans of the club, because you can see there is a solitary um, uh, Fulham Football Club scarf and one floral tribute precisely, and that's it. You think the whole place might be decked out in a veritable garden of flowers. Okay, and there is one here. Um, uh, and, um, here is a bouquet of flowers at the um, uh, foot of this footballer here, um, who's there. But apart from that um, uh, tribute on the statutory plinth, there's really there's, 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 there's nothing else. So it shows that he's largely forgotten or indeed held in deep disdain by fans of the club. I've got to say, Mohammed Fayed, who's been called to his reward at the age of four and ninety years, um, and apparently it was already been buried. Um, it's come out that he actually died on Wednesday, but it was only announced on Friday, and his funeral was held at the Central London Mosque, Mosque in Regent's Park. And he's been laid to rest beside his son, Dodi Fayed, who predeceased him by almost exactly 26 years when he had a motor mishap in Paris when he was sitting beside um, Her uh, Royal Highness Diana, Princess of Wales. Although, um, methought that um, she was stripped of the handle HRH, so she was mere Princess of Wales, the HRH had been deprived from her. That's a title too, as part of the divorce settlement. Um, so it shows that he really was not held in high regard by the fans of this club. Um, anyway, it's right beside Bishop's Park, the River Thames is just over the other side. I mean, it's sometimes been a Premier League club. I, I don't um, give two hoots about football, so I'm not sure where it is right now. Um, so Mohammed Fayad had his finger in many pies. Um, he was seen as a grocer, as he owned Harrods for many, many times, many, many years. He had interest in banking, in construction, in hotels. He and his brother, they co-owned the Ritz Hotel in Paris for years and that was contentious because it transpired he was giving free stays in the hotels to conservative MPs such as Jonathan Aitken and indeed Neil uh, Hamilton and Jonathan Aitken he um, perjured himself in court uh, which was really a profanation of the Christian faith uh, given that he was um, professed to be an ardent Christian and he took his oath upon the Holy Bible then he twisted his daughter's arm into also uh, making perjurious statements for him in court and she could have been in prison for that. Um, she wasn't, he went down for it, got a nine month sentence, so he said that, but he's since out, and um, he found Jesus again, and indeed has been ordained to the Church of England. It's part of his long-term rehabilitation strategy, because I remember listening on the radio in 98, after he'd lost his reputation, and the prosecution of Amir was, was about to go ahead, he went to prison in 99, um, and the interviewer saying, come on, this is not part of some sort of long-term strategy to get back into politics, he's saying, no, 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 it's not. But in 2005, it emerged that it was and he did try and come back as a conservative MP said constituents in his former um, uh, constituency of Thanet had asked him to do so but uh, anyway Michael Howe the, the then conservative leader said no his time as an MP is over obviously he got all the good conservatives a bad reputation Jonathan of Arabia um, part of his lying under oath um, about the, the stay in the Ritz Hotel in Paris and it was just an enterprising Guardian journalist he managed to find some records in a Swiss hotel proving where he and his wife were who'd been witnesses for him that they couldn't have been there I was very lucky that those records hadn't been destroyed and it were it not for that um, Aitken might have got away with his lies um, but Neil Hamilton he and his good wife they had stayed in the Ritz Hotel in Paris courtesy of Fayad's largesse and then um, Hamilton unwisely moved a libel action against Mohammed Fayed and indeed lost and you could see him staring into the abyss the hundreds of thousands of damages and costs he was going to have to pay to Mohammed Fayed but uh, he was declared bankrupt but all his earnings went to his spouse for a while the redoubtable Neil Hamilton and they rebuilt their financial position and he's the current leader of the United Kingdom Independence Party so Mohammed Fayed was certainly a very flamboyant character he loved publicity everything about him was carefully choreographed I'll tell you something he gave a bad name was those blue shirts with with white collars uh, and that was his signature um, uh, dress type well shirt type perhaps his finest hour was when he appeared on on um, Ali G um, in in April 2000 I remember being in Belfast my friend's house watching it and Ali G shows him a British passport and says here's you want to give me 10 quid for it it was an allusion to the fact that Fayed um, failed in his decades-long campaign to attain British British citizenship and indeed died an Egyptian never 
obtain British citizenship. I know it wasn't the point for the Conservative Party, of whom he'd once been a fervent supporter. Uh, Labour upheld that decision as well. Jack Straw, the Home Secretary under Tony Blair, said that Fire was not of good character. What else about him? Um, uh, so, yeah, and that Ali G show, um, um, getting it, saying, okay, well, we're going to be rappers. Like, I'll be the Buster Rhymes and you be the LL Cool J. And I'll be the, oh, goodness, Eminem and you'll be the old dirty bastard. And he was taken aback by that and joking that Neil, what would you say if you saw Neil Hamilton here right now? He said, nothing. Fire said, I'd say nothing to him. To me, he is nothing. I said, OK, come out, Neil Hamilton. Well, Neil Hamilton wasn't there. And, and Fire said, well, I saw him every day in the court for six weeks. It wouldn't matter. And Neil Hamilton said, say, he saw you wearing panties and a bra saying, I wish I was a girl, I really do. And, and Mohammed said, no, that's, he's the one who's doing that. that. He's well known for doing that. So Fayyad, he did speak perfect English. Uh, got to hand him that. And um, later on, had him dancing with these go-go dancers who were gyrating against him. But getting to do a rap song saying, um, uh, I am um, Muhammad and you are Ali, freestyling. What else about him in, in that when they really sent him up? Saying, if I see anything in, in Harrods I like, can I nick it? You can nick it, can I nick it? You can nick it. Good girl's going to nick it anyway. But Ali G, that Sasha Baron Cohen, the humorist, saying, well, don't shop at Harrods. You can buy the same thing at my uncle's Jamal's for a quarter of the price. Uh, so um, anyway, was he a sport to do that? But he was a major hoe, would just do anything to be on it. There were people who would say that he was irascible. Um, he was a terrible bully. Um, he was a thug with size of his opponents. He was rather oafish and unsubtle. So I think um, finesse would never have been one of his um, saving graces. So he leaves behind um, four children and his um, Finnish widow. He was married to, um, was it a, um, uh, Mr. Khashoggi's sister, the famous um, Khashoggi arms dealer, as in uncle of um, the murdered journalist Jamal Khashoggi, as in Khashoggi spoonmaker in Turkish, but they actually come from Turkey centuries before. And that's why he come from for a family with relatively modest means, Mohammed Fayed, he this opened many doors for him, he got a lot of money. Um, just as Saudi Arabia was beginning to get a very become a very wealthy country. Because up until then it Egypt had been the driving seat in the big daddy of the Arab world. But by the sixties Saudi Arabia was getting very wealthy. Um, so that is Mohammed Fayed. Yeah, um, it's, there's, there's this private tomb. Well, it's really sort of a flashback to the 90s. And to the end, he protested um, his crackpot theories that um, there was some uh, elaborate plot by MI6 to murder his son because they were so racialist and religionist and couldn't abide a man of the Mohammedan faith marrying uh, the mother of the future king of the United Kingdom. So we haven't heard from him very much. Um, so uh, someone who's um, craving publicity and coming out with um, Looney Tunes theories is rather redolent of um, uh, the person who would have been, how to put it, his step-grandson, Prince Harry, had this fantasy of Dodie marrying Diana ever born fruit. But alas and alack, it didn't. All right, thank you very much for watching my video. Goodbye, everybody.